I've invested over a million dollars into the crypto market already, and I can access any of those funds whenever I want. I think that if you want three crypto coins, it'd be those three. I do get asked how I spend my money. Like, yeah, you're rich, Brian, but like, what do you do with that wealth? I'm going to learn how to invest in crypto because it's something I'm interested in. And today, Nick's gonna give me a masterclass on what I should be spending my money on and why. All right, kids, who here could tell me what Bitcoin is? Brian. Uh, Bitcoin is... Uh... No, that's not what Bitcoin is. Okay. Okay. Bitcoin is a currency that we've all deemed to be valuable, but I don't know why. That's funny, but that's a really good way to look at it. Bitcoin is currently a currency that we have all agreed upon is valuable. Yep. What about the Canadian dollar? The Canadian dollar is a currency that every individual in Canada has also agreed as valuable and is valuable relative to other currencies in the world. So USD, you'd give the same explanation yep. just from the United States standpoint. Yep. We'll start with just USD and CAD. Their value is based on perception. Mm -hmm. Their value is based on agreements socially, and then those are based and compared to other currencies across the world. Yeah. So what's the number one world currency right now? Uh, currency. USD. Yep. Yes, USD is the standard of currency, okay? Why is the US dollar number one? Because they won both of the world wars. Because <laughs> we fought our way to be number one. <laughs> Pretty much. What has happened to the US dollar over the last almost 100 years? It used to be based off of gold. Yes. And now it is not based off of gold, they just print it. Yes. So we have the gold standard. We have gold, we have silver. Those are gonna be our precious metals. Now, typically, whenever we have some sort of reset, we can go back to the gold standard and, and almost like reset the value of our money. So yeah. since then, the US dollar, I think, has dropped over 90% in value. What $1 used to buy, now $90 buys. That's, that's the decrease that we've had in value so far. So because we're printing so much more money, it's not as valuable anymore. We understand this concept. Yeah. Yes? Yep. Nick, you with yes. me? Okay. The more in circulation, the less in value. Now, I just wanna clarify for the YouTube channel, like just going kind of like basic over broad concepts here, yeah. not necessarily like this is exactly what it is and there's no other way around it. So I hope that people bear with me about this. All of these currencies are stacked up against each other to, to understand their value. Where Bitcoin comes into play is this is basically an entire different type of currency on its own. When I say Bitcoin, I'm talking about crypto as a whole. When it comes to Bitcoin or the whole cryptocurrency, the reason that it is so valuable is because it's decentralized, which means nobody can interfere. It is it is its own self-governing currency. Now, you obviously have uh, market manipulation where a bunch of whales can come in and buy millions and hundreds of millions of dollars of Bitcoin to pump the price and then they can sell it and drop the price and rebuy. And so you can manipulate the market like that. And that's typically what happens a lot. So that's why a lot of people see crypto and the market goes like this, right? It's super fucking volatile. And so people go, no, 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 I don't want to do that shit. Like Bitcoin, it's, it's 70,000 right now, but what happens when it crashes again? You know, it was 5,000 a couple years ago. So then we look at something like the US dollar that's here. And then it's just been slowly declining ever since. If I look right here on the US dollar, and this is just time going by, me zoomed in, it feels stable. Currency, US dollar, Canadian currency, it all feels very stable. But if I zoom out, I'm consistently losing the value. I'm basically consistently losing money over the course of time. Now, if I come over here to Bitcoin and I zoom in, it looks incredibly tumultuous. It looks incredibly volatile. But if I look at this trend, it's not gradually going up over time, it's actually exponentially growing up over time. So one appears stable, but I'm losing money every day. Or crypto is a lot more volatile right now because it's so early, but regardless, it's just consistently going up no matter what. Mm -hmm. And at this point now, with the Bitcoin ETF that was just approved and the Ethereum ETF that was just approved, it's too big to fail. What's an ETF? Basically, the, the hedge fund goes, hey, we're going to buy Bitcoin and you can invest in the fund that we have of Bitcoin. Got it. Yep. So now these huge institutions were approved because you have to get approved in order to have an ETF. So they approved an ETF for Bitcoin. It was the first cryptocurrency ETF ever approved. So now people can go to the hedge fund and be like, I'm going to give you money. Now Bitcoin. all of Wall Street money is going into the crypto market. So over $7 billion has gone into Bitcoin 
just from that ETF alone already. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> we have we have gold and silver. Yep. Right. And so I would consider this Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay. So Bitcoin is the gold of the crypto market. Ethereum is the silver. If I don't actually like or am invested in what I'm investing in, then it's not the right investment. Yep. I think a lot of times people are trying to catch the market. And so they frantically buy and put money into crypto. And when I'm frantic in making a decision, I am frantic in the execution of that decision. Got it. So I'm like, oh shit, everything's gonna go up. I don't have a lot of money, but I need to go in or I'm gonna miss this wagon. And I put $500 in, I only have 700 in my account. Mm. The next day, Bitcoin goes down 5%. Mm. I panic, I sell everything, I lose 5% of that money. Mm -hmm. The next day, Bitcoin goes back up. I panic, I think I'm gonna miss it, I buy again. Mm. Bitcoin goes down 10%, I sell. Mm. Now I've lost 15% of my money because I'm not emotionally stable here because I'm making decisions based on short-term frantic mm. and not long-term grounded. Got it. That's our goal. Yep. So anything, what we like what I teach my students when we talk about this is if I'm gonna put money into the crypto market, that's a three-year commitment. Mm -hmm. What is the safety that you associate with having all of your money in the bank account? I'm used to it. You're used to it? What else? I can look at the number and know it's not gonna go it's crazy up and down. Yeah. I've invested over a million dollars into the crypto market already, and I can access any of those funds whenever I want. People are more inclined to keep their money in a bank account that is deceitfully losing value over time because they haven't taken the time to understand something new. And remember, it's, it's easier to deem something bad than to understand it. Ethereum is more use case. Ethereum has the blockchains almost not almost, a significant amount of other crypto projects are built on the Ethereum blockchain. Yep. So from my perspective, yes, Bitcoin is a massive storage of value. Yes, everybody is trying to run and grab Bitcoin because Bitcoin supply is actually decreasing. So remember, circulation going up is a decrease in value. Mm -hmm. So then if circulation is going down, we have an increase in value. Mm -hmm. So Bitcoin is an appreciating asset. That's why we have the yeah. halving cycle. So every yeah. four years, they burn half of the circulating supply of Bitcoin. The technology basically will keep doing that until there's only a million Bitcoin in circulation. Mm -hmm. All of these people are fighting for this thing. When that goes down to a million Bitcoin, where's the price gonna go? Mm -hmm. It's gonna go through the roof. Mm -hmm. A million dollar Bitcoin is not a, a fairy tale. It's a definite. It's already programmed. Mm -hmm. That's what people don't understand. Mm -hmm. I genuinely believe if people do not get on this ship in the next three to six months, they're going to get left behind. Mm -hmm. So think about this. They finally got Wall Street to agree to put that money into Bitcoin. And now already they've approved it to go somewhere else. So that's, mm -hmm. just, that's just the start of the waterfall down for all of these ETFs to start moving over into the crypto scene, which means mm -hmm. Wall Street starts to adopt the entire crypto market as mm -hmm. almost an additional stock market. Mm. The global stock market currently is valued at $97 trillion. Okay. That's a lot of trillions. Yeah. The gold and the silver market is 13 trillion. The Bitcoin market cap, just Bitcoin, not the rest of crypto, is $553 billion. So the crypto market, I think, I think with where Bitcoin's currently at, because Bitcoin is usually about half of the market. Mm -hmm. So I think with where Bitcoin's currently at, I don't know if the crypto market is at a trillion or it's probably just underneath it. So we'll just say it's a mm -hmm. trillion dollars for, I don't have it in front of me right now. So think about this. The entire crypto market is worth a trillion, one trillion dollars, one. Gold and silver is worth 13. The global stock market is worth 97. If this money starts to shift into here, even if the crypto market goes and matches the gold and silver, that's a 13x. Mm -hmm. That's a 13x return mm -hmm. just, just from that alone. So if only 10% of the global stock market goes to Bitcoin, Bitcoin grows by $9.7 trillion. If 10% of the gold and silver market goes in, that would add another 1.3 trillion which would put Bitcoin $630,000 US. Where else can you possibly get a return like that? Mm -hmm. Number one goal to ask yourself first is, what is my intention with investing? I think my intention with investing is, I want to invest in something that I know is going to go up. I don't think I need or want to access the funds. I think that I want my money to start making money for me. Yeah. 
You have Bitcoin, you have Ethereum, then you have alt altcoins, alternative coins that aren't Bitcoin and Ethereum. And all of these coins, they're cheaper by a substantial amount, which means they also, in my opinion, have the potential to make you way more return on your money. So a really easy website for you to go on to look at coins is called CoinGecko. So you have Bitcoin and Ethereum. You can see what their prices are right now, 3,500, 66,000 you see their market caps. And market cap is really what we wanna to use to figure out the price of a coin. Mm -hmm. So people go, you know, oh, Ethereum's gonna, you know, hit $20,000. That would mean that this needs to 4X. Mm -hmm. That's not realistic mm -hmm. right now with where everything is at. You know, Bitcoin's gonna double, okay? We would need $1.3 trillion to go into Bitcoin for it to double. Mm -hmm. This is called Trading View. So let me go to XRP on here. So XRP is currently 48 cents. Mm -hmm. right. Now I'm, I'm a big XRP investor. I have, I have a, a pretty good bag there. Now let's just look at this. From XRP, now keep in mind, Bitcoin's at a pretty much at its all time high. Yep. Right now, everything, not everything, but almost everything returns to its all time high on bull runs and yep. then goes past them. Yeah. So with where we're at right now, I can make really easy, easy, remember, not everything I say is a definite, I can make fairly easy predictions on what's gonna happen with my money based on where I put it. If I can look at where a coin at is at now and where it's all time high was. Yep. So if I go to 48 cents and I bring this all the way up to it's all time high here at $3.30, that means that if I invest anything into XRP right now and it returns to it's all time high, I'm gonna make a 581% return on my money. Yep. It doesn't matter the price of the coin. It matters what the return is going to be on the investment in that coin. And that's really what I think the, the shift needs to be for people. So to, to answer the question of what should you put your money into? I will say the safest bets in crypto are Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay. Solana is definitely the third. So Bitcoin, Ethereum and Solana, I truly don't think you can go wrong. I think that if you want three crypto coins, that you can buy, store their value, and literally once you buy them, send them to a ledger, not even need to check them ever again, it'd be those three. Okay. All I can literally share are opinions, so I hope everybody understands that. These are just opinions based on me. I'm not an expert by any means, so it really just depends on what type of investor you are. Huh. Do you wanna be an active participant and do you wanna search out and have some fun and try to find these things? Or do you just want to invest so it's peace of mind and you know it's gonna go up no matter what? That. Okay. Then I would go big. I would go Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, seventy percent, and then the other thirty percent I would move into a couple a couple smaller cap coins. Okay, I'll have you buy a ledger right now. Um, this goes for anybody who's going to buy crypto. Is, if you, is, it, is the ledger a trust wallet? No, a ledger is actually a physical wallet. So yeah. it's maybe like the size of this right here, and it plugs into your computer. It hooks up to your MetaMask. Yeah. So when you send everything to your MetaMask, now the only way for that money to leave that account is if this is connected and you physically type in your password and hit enter. Hmm. So it's inhackable. Yeah. Um, and then you can also have cold wallets that are apps on your phone that you have passcodes to. So for like, this is the, this is the app that I have all of my um, my XRP on. Yeah. And the only way that you can send out of this is if you have my password. And then in order, if I lose this and recover it, it's literally eight lines of numbers mm. that you have to type in in order to recover this account. Mm. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Think, think about MetaMask as like your online bank, basically. So this is, this is Chase Bank for me just in the crypto market, right? And so you look at this, uh, I have all these different bank accounts that I can technically connect and switch between inside of this bank account so I can use my bank and access different things online. This is web three. So if I go to my main one, right, this is my theory, this is like where I hold some of my Ethereum and stuff. And so this is where if I have my ledger plugged into here, nothing in this account can leave unless I type it in and hit enter. But I can receive money here without that. So when I, whenever I buy something on Coinbase, I instantly send it to this wallet. And so I've basically transferred it to my bank account that only I have access to. So MetaMask is like an online banking system, so to speak, that allows you to bank in other areas that you couldn't access without it. So it kind of gives you, it's like a permission slip to go into the DGEN decentralized space. It's like, it's a decentralized bank account. That's what it is. There we go. In total, I've deposited 125,000 into my crypto account. Now I did end up selling some, but now because I sold some and I bought some, sold some, bought some. In total, I've invested negative $1,500.
and my portfolio is worth 20 grand. That's in terms of like over the last few years. So I want to start investing 30 grand a month. Get a 13x return on that. We're going to copy this. Where's your Coinbase? Uh, there. Okay. So we're going to send Ethereum. I'm going to send $20 of Ethereum. because we. First rule, if you've never sent it anywhere before, always send a very small amount just to test. So now basically all we're doing is just waiting to see if that transaction shows up, which for Ethereum send it really shouldn't take that long. It shouldn't take more than a minute. Okay. Coinbase is an exchange. It's not a wallet or a bank that you would hold things on. So for me, if something's in Coinbase, it's vulnerable to be hacked and lost. So buy on Coinbase, send it to your MetaMask, but then we need to get Brian a ledger so that he can connect that to his MetaMask so that that way nothing can leave it unless he has the hardware wallet connected to it. You need to make sure that you write down and, and protect all of your passcodes. Okay. Because if you fucking forget them, that's it. You can't access your crypto. So you buy on the exchange and you transfer to your wallet. Yep. And that's the habit. Yep. Okay. If you are a fucking crypto guy and I'm a content guy, you're a content guy and I'm a crypto guy. Yay. So this YouTube will be complete when I have my wallets all set up. So I'm going to set up my Xamarin wallet. So we'll see you guys on Monday. You bro. I'm going to set up my Xamarin wallet and then the other one for Bitcoin, whatever one that was. Uh, Ledger Live should, look at, Ledger Live is this one. Ledger Live is the app. Ledger Live is the app for your laptop that connects to your Ledger hardware wallet when you get it. And how do I get a Ledger hardware wallet? We're going to order it online. Okay needs to be from ledgerlive.com. It needs to be from the actual Ledger website. Don't buy it off Amazon or anything like that because it's really easy for people to backdoor those. And it could be from somebody who hacks it. So when you plug it in, they just get access to your account. So make sure it's from the actual Ledger site. Ledger.com? Yes. Oh, it's free. It comes in one day. That's because your headquarters is in Canada. Oh, really? No, I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, today was the crypto masterclass. My awareness has expanded. I think the big shift for me was when you said, using your crypto as a bank account. You got two different bank accounts. And I was like, ding, like I can just use it as a bank account instead of being like, I need to make money from this thing. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm just storing my wealth. Correct. Yeah, so that was good. I got my uh, MetaMask set up on my phone. I've got my Xanum app set up. I just ordered my ledger. Once my ledger gets here, Nick will help me set it up or I'll kill him and we're good to go. Wow. So I feel good. Like, yeah. comment, share, subscribe, yeah. follow, follow him for more. Also, if you guys want the free masterclass that Nick did with his boy, comment the word masterclass on this video. Actually, no, bad, what am I doing? That's a Instagram real CTA. We're gonna put the link in the description for the video if you guys want a masterclass on how to use all this shit. We're not experts, but this is just opinions. Peace.